Well, it's interesting for me um, during that session when we were outside was when I am sauntering at uh, Birkin Monastery, for the first two years it was, uh, I was kind of goal-oriented or driven. I'd be like wanting to go explore an area that might be uh, three or four miles away, so it'd be like an hour walk to get there and then I'd be exploring that area, just enjoying, just sort of seeing the, the lay of the land, um, you know, the, the weather, seeing, seeing animals, just kind of enjoying that. And then I'd walk you know, back to the monastery uh, for whatever I had to do back there. And I, I'm also, um, oops, I don't think we've got light on. But uh, um, I always carry a camera with me. So I was an uh, iconographer before, but I've turned into a videographer. And so I love doing time lapse. And uh, when I'm outdoors, just sort of noticing, um, you know, cloud formations and just, uh, um, you know, paying attention to that. And I noticed like over a couple year period of doing that, that just, I was very, very slowly learning sort of the climate or the weather patterns of that particular part of uh, British Columbia. And the first year when I would go out and, and do videography, um, I would come up with some nice shots, but they were always by chance or circumstance. Um, we didn't uh, really have any um, rhyme or reason for why those shots turned out. And then I would, uh, oftentimes what I would do as I was walking, would take some photographs or some videos and I would come back and look at them later uh, as I was editing them. And I'd be thinking, oh, I could, I wish I'd filmed it this way. I wish I'd done that differently. And so I'd try to go back and try to find the conditions that were the same or similar. And yeah, it's someone over there saying, you can't do that. <laughs> that is absolutely true. But if you do it over a three year period, you can. Because you, you start to learn the pattern. You start to see nature and how it works. And so I've gotten to the point with this particular environment, I'll be like looking out and go, oh, this is what's going to look like in an hour from now. And I can go out and set my camera up and try to capture with with clouds and the weather. It's a, it's always a, a gamble or you, you're not, never quite going to get what you think you're going to get. Um, but... Um, it's interesting for me just this putting yourself into a situation in nature repeatedly over and over and over again. It's really fascinating to me like what you can learn from that process. And um, so this, you know, when I came out here, this is my first time you walk around. So it's like talking about raising the interest or, you know, what, what, what you find being attracted to. I was attracted to everything because it's like everything was new. So it was, it was uh, almost distracting. It was just so, you know, there was so much attention there. And I realized, like, when I was first at Birkin Monastery, just all the continually, you know, walking, and I would sit when I would do the time lapse. I'd set my, time, my camera up, and then I would sit and meditate. But I was basically kind of using it as just doing breath meditation, body awareness, loving kindness meditation, like whatever I learned formally. And I wasn't really using the elements as part of that. So I've only really started recently doing that, say the last you know, four to six months, using that as a meditation object. And I guess it was, especially this, this last month up in uh, Birkin, it is starting to change the season. We're finally getting into spring and uh, it's, actually one of the worst times to get out to saunter because there's still too much snow in the forest to, to go through and it's real mushy and you can sink up to your waist kind of in the snow. In the summer, in the winter time, you can walk right on top of it a lot of times. And, but now it's like, it's too wet. And then the roads, it's all dirt roads there and they're all mud. Sometimes they're like a, a foot thick of mud. And so it's, it's kind of dangerous. So I've been actually doing much more sitting when I go out. I'll get to a spot, find a tree or a secluded place and go sit. And the other day, it was I, I was paying attention to my body. Uh, it was right after the meal, which is usually the hardest time to meditate because your, your body's full. And 
you know, actually all the energy in your body is going to digest that food, so it's, you, know, you tend to want to fall asleep. And but I knew I didn't I didn't want to do that, and uh, I just needed some exercise, so I just I walked out to this little island we have. It's, it's still frozen all around, so I walked out and we have a meditation platform. And I was sitting there, and it was really gray, and it was really windy. And wind is like my least favorite um, element to practice in. It just feels abrasive, you know, just the, 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 the wind hitting you. And, and so I kind of went out there kind of feeling almost dejected, like, you know, yeah, I'm tired, it's windy gray it's just not not that beautiful and then i just sat down and just you know just okay just open up to it and it was probably the best meditation i had all month it was just i noticed the the the, the wind was actually bringing <laughs> energy it was uh you know it's like it really wasn't that unpleasant the wind hitting the body and it was cold enough that the this was kind of like today like the sun keeps coming out and going away and so I was sitting there under this, it's basically just a little uh, roof to, um, big enough for one person to sit under. And so the sun was still hitting me when it was out and the sun would make me really warm. And I had you know, down, not down coat, but a winter coat on and a windbreaker. And when the sun was hitting me, I would just get really warm, feel really good. And then these really strong winds would come and just blow all my body heat away. And then, um, that that be it was it wasn't dangerous. Or I would have got up and, and moved, but it was just to seeing that process taking it all the way, and then the sun would come out a few minutes later and just feel the body warming up again, and just that continual change, just watching that, was fascinating to me. So I was really paying attention to that, and and I say paying attention. It's not like there was actually really anything happening. It was like more like just allowing my mind to be quiet. It wasn't. I wasn't out seeking something to, to look at. Uh, I just decided to go sit. And that's what was fascinating to me as I was sitting there, just noticing the change and the temperature of the body and, uh, going from very comfortable to very uncomfortable to very comfortable again. And then just this whole process and what was causing that. And, and also, to, like I say, it just, it just brought up the energy. So then if there was sort of like neutral nothing going on, the mind was just bright and being able to be with the body. So I was basically just using body awareness meditation, but seeing how the elements were affecting that. And that's when I really got that, oh, this is going to be, this is, there's something really to this type of meditation. And I also started in the last, say, three or four months, spending much more time outdoors, meditating physically, just, you know, sitting down in meditation. Because this summer I'm going to spend um, two months in the Sierras, the Sierra Mountains, going to backpacking. A couple of friends of mine are uh, helping me out, going to be my caretaker, my stewards. And uh, so I'll be doing a lot of backpacking. And it's so like at Birkin, it's really kind of beautiful. Ajahn Sona calls it figure eight sort of uh, camping. So you kind of have your your, your base and then you sort of walk out one direction for three or four hours and then you end up back where the shower is and the warm bed and where the meal is and then the next day you can go out and walk a different direction and you come back to the same spot. So I've been doing these figure eights for three years all around Berkham. and But you can time it. You know, it can be out there for two hours or <coughs> three hours and you always have the safety of coming back. And so that's why I was, I think in the beginning was so kind of goal-oriented just doing all uh, walking for three hours and not necessarily sitting at all, but using that as a meditation, just the walking. But I figure when I get to this year, this can be 24 hours every day. You're outside. And so just learning <laughs> to feel comfortable sitting in, outside in the elements. And so I've been practicing that and to, to, to get out there and do that. And it's, it's the other thing, too, is when I was doing these time laps, I'm usually just doing of the clouds or the sky or shadows across the, the earth. And so I um, decided to, for one video I made, um, of did four or five meditations of me sitting in meditation, having me actually in the shot. And it was quite fascinating because I filmed a few indoors 
when it was really cloudy and uh, just stormy. And, and when you do a time lapse, like, you can think you're sitting there perfectly straight up and down. You, know, you are pretty quiet, but when you watch it in time lapse, you're going, you're, you're mm -hmm. constantly making you know, little adjustments, and it's like, I can't show that. It looks like I'm a horrible meditator. <laughs> pride, pride comes in, and uh, I can't show those. But I film myself outdoors, and for like half hour meditations, 45 minute meditations, and I'm like this. I didn't move. And I was like, I showed it to Ajahn Sona, and he's like, Ajahn Possum's advice, that's not insignificant. Pay attention to that. Like, that's your element when you're outside. You are energized, you are absorbing, you are um, enthralled with being outdoors. So you should you know, try to develop that as your, as your meditation. And so it's quite interesting that you know, doing videography taught me something about my meditation. And so the other thing I went, kind of wanted to mention with, like, again, it's, it's like we're not really trying to do anything. And if you take this on as a practice of getting outdoors and, and sauntering, say it's really taken me like three years to kind of get a, get a feel for it and have some sort of understanding of really what I'm doing. It took me a, really about a year. And what I noticed, the first time I, I guess I really started seeing like the joy and the benefit of getting out every day for a long walk in nature was when I first got to Birkin, I had lived basically 20 years at a Bayagiri and kind of saw that as my home. I actually helped, like when I first got there, everybody lived in tents, you know, it's from that to what it is now. You know, I spent you know, 20 years of my life helping the community build it up to where it is now. And then for various reasons, I decided to step away for a period of time. And it was like this very filled with doubt or uncertainty, like, you know, what is my future going to be? Because I, uh, I left with the half joke of I'm leaving with no intention of returning and no intention of staying away. Just, I'm just going to go out and just see what happens. And... Um, very, I told this to Ajahn Sona when I first got there, and I said, you know, what, what should I do? Because I'd been away, I'd have been at the Catholic monastery for a year, and I was getting ready to be on retreat for a year. And I said, you know, what should I do? And he said, dream, and dream big. That was, the, that was his only advice, you know, what my future should be. And I told him, I said, as soon as he said that, as he was saying it, two, two ideas popped into my head. I wanted a mansion <laughs> in the Sierra Mountains where I would teach icon retreats do, using creativity as a meditation technique, that and taking people hiking, going hiking. And uh, I told Ajahn Sona later, I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to do those things, but I don't want to teach that, maybe. Or, you know, who wants to have the upkeep of a huge mansion? Something like this, you know. And so, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've actually... The dream has gone away. But, uh, uh, well, the pandemic started. I actually was going to teach two retreats on those subjects, and they were the first ones that got canceled in the pandemic, so I haven't got to develop them. But, uh, um, yeah, so this, uh, what I really loved, you know, Ajahn, Ajahn Sun was like, yeah, you know, dream and dream big. So those were the ideas. And so I did start doing you know, a lot of this just walking every day. And uh, um, I noticed, I think, it's funny because like one of my teachers, um, I won't mention their name, but he used to always talk about doubt or kind of anxiety was there, one of their defilements. And he was, you know, really charismatic and energetic. And I was like, I, I don't, see, you know, how could that be? You know, he just doesn't seem to have anxiety or doubts. And I, it was like, I could never relate to him because I was kind of a young man and oriented and I didn't feel like I had any, any doubts or uncertainties about myself. So I was like, well, that's not, not relevant for me. But then when I was in this situation, of like, what's my future? I would be walking and all of a sudden I would just feel the, the body, would just feel the sense of dread, the sort of sense of you know, insecurity or not knowing what you're going to do. And it would you know, kind of just cloud my entire mood or you know, the, physical, the physical body. And I knew just to not get into the story. Um, you know, the, you know, the story is kind of added to it, but I would just go to the body and just feel what it felt like. And that was perfectly fine. 
you know, I didn't have to, but I always saw the mind wanted to connect that, that sense of vulnerability or uncertainty to that feeling. And then, um, say, almost every day I'd go for these long walks. And then after about a year, I started noticing this pattern that that physical sensation would come on to me. And I remember it was like after it happened, like say three or four times, it, would, it used to be like one time would come up and I may not feel it again for two or three months. And then it would come up again and I'm like, you know, oh boy, you're, you're anxious about that. You know, and want to get into the storytelling or justifying it or trying to find a solution to, to it. And after about the third or fourth time, I was just sort of like, this feeling that's arising it's probably because I had two cups of coffee this morning and I really only have one. It has nothing to do with anxiety at all. It's just it's a physical thing that's happening in my body. Because there was nothing happening before that that had anything to do with why I should feel insecure or anything. And I realized it's like I never would have actually figured that out if I hadn't been walking every single day for the last year. And so so it's like one say one idea of this where I was talking this morning about instructions is you know finding something that you're interested in getting absorbed into it that's definitely one way to do it but another is just by putting yourself in the elements and you do it long enough you'll start to see these patterns like I was saying with the, you know, being a videography and noticing when you're going to film something or what's what's the best time to do that you'll start noticing these patterns. And that can happen in any type of meditation. So like if you're doing, if you have a very serious practice and you're meditating for you know, every day, you have a meditation subject, that same, those same insights can happen. Yeah. But for me, it's like I was saying, when, when I'm sitting outside, it's the, the awareness wants to be there, the, the attention's there. And so that's one, I think, one real advantage to, yeah, the, being outside, meditating outdoors, being in the elements. Now, I'm not going to talk too long here because I do want us to have another period outdoors. And then we'll come back and I'll open it up for questions, hopefully some answers. But uh, when we go back outside this time, um, I noticed it's, uh, I think it's easier to kind of get absorbed into something if you just sit. So I you notice there's lots of benches outside, or you know, hopefully there's some patches of, of concrete or that's kind of dry. And uh, so I'd encourage that. Do go out and walk for a little bit if you want to stretch your body. Um, that does energize us. Um, but just yeah, find some place and, um, and and just sit for you know at least 10, 15 minutes. And if you want to get up and walk around again, but just sit and then see if, if something you know draws your attention or and it can even just be something as simple as like this last sit as I was sitting here. I'm not sure where the air is moving from, but I, I can feel the air coming through these steps and hitting the side of my face. And so I was using that as my, my meditation object, just noticing the current of the air through this room. So it could be, it looks like it's very patchy sunshine right now. So you know, it could be something like that, just watching the, the sun coming and moving off of our bodies. You know, the movement of the air it could be the sound, you know, hearing uh, even you know, children laughing off in the distance, or just whatever draws your attention, and just uh, allow that allow to be. Or you could, if you you, you saw something that does interest you, a flower. Or, you know, Wade will testify it, but uh, I can show everybody afterwards. But this last time I was sitting, I was underneath a big tree over there. And I noticed there was a black streak on the tree, and so I went over to it and was looking at it. And somehow the water is coming down the tree and goes through the bark on the inside of the tree, and then comes down on the outside of the, the the bark. And I got this video of it, and it's a hundred colors. It's like every color that's out there was reflected in this one little patch of of water dripping from the uh, the tree, and uh, and so. Like how I would use that as meditation was just like notice my mind was absorbed into that. And I, I do, when I do my sauntering, I take my camera with me and I find it very helpful because I'm always trying to capture images. So I'm, I'm really looking for 
you know, something that's uh, beautiful or you know, different perspective of things. And then, you know, I film it. And then you take that. Remember, as you're doing it, if you remember paying attention to what it feels like when you are interested, then you can go back later and just, I can just think about that image. And it can bring up the memory of what it was like because I paid attention to what it's like to be interested. And then the memory of being interested is the same as the act, as the actual process of being interested. And so that's, that's an entryway into, into concentration practice. And, and so I talk about that the same way with often with generosity. If you're kind to somebody in any, any way, you know, it can bring this wholesome joy into yourself with being kind. And if you're really paying attention when you do that, then you can go back later. And a good way to start your meditation is to just use memory of, okay, what was what was the happiest I was today? You know, it's like noticing beautiful colors in the drip of the water, or smelling a flower, or being kind to somebody opening the door for them. Um, and if you remember that joy and you're paying attention when you did it, it it's an it's a entry into the meditation. So why don't we go outside for about 20 minutes, or 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We'll maybe ring the bell at about uh, um, 3.35.